If you look at any of the game art in my videos, a lot of it is fairly simple. And hopefully most of you agree that making a bush like this is something that you can learn how to do. But I got a comment recently mentioning how even though they followed my advice, it didn't turn out that well. So I want to talk about how a lot of where people go wrong in making their game art, it's not actually about their drawing skills, and that you can make your game look better by drawing less. The reason for this is that when you're trying to represent something that actually exists in the world, and make it as realistic or well drawn as possible, it will inevitably increase the risk of making errors. Take this tree for instance, it looks bad. And it largely looks bad because it's trying to make a detailed and realistic texture, and then failing at it. Compare that to a really simple tree, with almost no attempts at even making a texture, and it looks better. Trying to do too much with your art can often be the reason why your art looks bad. It isn't always about your art skills themselves, but about your art direction. So let me bring up an example. This is Camera Obscura, which is quite a fun puzzle platformer. But hopefully I agree that it doesn't look as good as it actually is. You might think that this is fundamentally about your drawing skills, but I would argue that a large portion of it is about not understanding appeal and not hiding what you're bad at. So I recreated this scene. Instead of this tile, I recreated something like this. Then I took this large background asset with colors that kind of clash with each other, and lastly I shaded a door sort of quickly. Hopefully you agree that these scenes are somewhat analogous. Now without actually drawing any better, let's fix it. Instead of trying to draw and render things, like the trees, rocks, and mushrooms, I should stop and think, do I actually know how to shade and render things? And if the answer is no, you should probably stick with something as simple as a silhouette. This asset looks better by showing less of it, because all the details that you could see, like the colors and the line art, was actively telling you that I don't know what I'm doing. Instead of trying to represent the thing perfectly with your colors, like making the grass green and the rocks brown, just limit your entire palette to something like two colors. So if we do that with this scene, we'll just limit all the colors to roughly purple and blue. So instead of the old asset with colors like this, you just make the entire thing purple. A purple rock asset might not make sense on its own, but if we now look in the game, all assets purple and blue, and it immediately looks better, just by putting constraints on ourselves. If we don't know what we're doing, we need to actively do less. This even goes for something such as details in the asset. This asset has a lot of detail, same with this door, but if we just make it slightly bigger and less detailed, and then instead of making all these small detailed rocks, we just skip drawing them entirely. And instead of trying to make a detailed door, we can just make the shape of a door instead. Then we look at the scene, and it kind of works. Now we have something similar to a game like Thomas Was Alone. It isn't visually impressive, but one thing it does well is that it's inoffensive. There's not much there to suggest that the developer doesn't know what they're doing. It all looks like an intentional stylistic choice. As another example, we can look at a game like Hue. There's nothing that looks amateurish. I can't actually tell how good or bad the artist is, because while it doesn't rely on any fancy assets, like we can see in games such as Ori, all the scenes have great silhouettes and the set design looks carefully considered. Hue is actually quite a good game to analyze, because on top of being simple and not showing anything unappealing, it also understands what it needs to do to lure the audience in and appeal to their potential customer which is what we're gonna look at next. So let me start by asking you something. What is good art? Is this type of painting better or more difficult to make than this? You might think that the answer is obvious, but I paint portraits much like this one, yet my game art looks like this. Now you might ask yourself, how come a person who can paint this also draws this? One aspect is that the end goals are different. In a painting like this one, I need to get correct proportions, colors, and light. Whereas in game art, you can create something incorrect and ugly and make that the selling point of your game. It fundamentally boils down to appeal. You need to understand what your target audience likes and wants. If you paint portraits, quite often you might be doing it on commission. So getting the likeness and proportions correct and making it as realistic as possible is what the audience wants. But when you're doing game art, especially for an indie game, that's no longer the case. No one cares about your effort or your skill. Making a game that people want to buy is not inherently about being good at the fundamentals of art, but about market research. Think about a game like Gatto Roboto. It's fairly simple looking, low bit, black and white, but I'm willing to bet there are more people than me that saw it and thought, cute cat, let's give it a try. As another example, I have a friend who doesn't generally play platformers, but I have seen him play one game, and that is Broforce. And looking at his Steam profile, the game fits perfectly. What this means is that the developers have to some extent managed to convince my friend to buy a game out of his preferred genre, 
purely by understanding his taste and appealing to it. And while games like Hollow Knight, Ori, and Tales of Iron are indeed made by extremely skilled artists, they also fundamentally understand their audience. So why does my game art look like it does? Well, because it doesn't actually matter if it looks visually impressive or difficult to make. I'm doing my best to cater to a specific audience. In this case, people with similar taste to mine. While it might not be good enough to convince a player to buy your game purely on the art, it can still be important to consider what it is about your game that is hooking the audience in, and that you can focus your attention on and do well. If we look back at the scene we created, we might not know how to draw, but at that point, maybe we should just work a bit on particle effects. We can add some particles flying around, some particles in the sky, and maybe some particles on the door. Just trying to add some small things that we know we can learn how to do, and then focus our attention on that, and polishing that. Find what your appeal and your hook is, and then make sure that the core of that is there. Then focus on the fluff. For games like Hoa, the appeal is to a large extent how the assets are rendered and how they look. Particles are somewhat secondary. Whereas a game like Super Meat Boy can do well without focusing on the assets, but needs to absolutely nail creating a satisfying death and having a nice feel and control of the character. A big reason why this is so important is also about time investment. If you figure out early what it is that draws the viewer in, you can focus on doing that well, and you'll save time not overworking things that fundamentally don't matter. Most of the scenes I have on the channel consist of just bushes, trees, and rocks, precisely because I can make it quickly without it looking off. While I will do more content on architecture and things like that in the future, the truth is that it's significantly more difficult to do, and will take me a considerable time to do well. For me, the thing I view as my appeal is the art style itself. Shaders and animations are what I view as fluff, which is why I've spent a long time developing a style that looks decent and that I can do quickly, and only spent a few hours on animations and shaders. So I would generally never make art that looks like this scene. But that is because I can make this type of art almost equally quickly. And if you're in the position to make this type of art and finish a game in two years, or never finishing a game because you attempt to make this type of art, then I would personally always recommend you to think smaller and make simpler art that looks nice. This is one of the reasons I don't like the advice that you should focus on fundamentals. Because there are plenty of fundamentals that you can and probably should skip learning. You don't need to learn anatomy if you simply avoid making realistic representations of humans. So if you aren't good enough at art to appeal to someone who likes sort of dark fantasy, and you don't actually like drawing, then realistically, you probably shouldn't try. But the thing is, you can generally get away with making an appealing game without being a good artist. You just need to hide the things you're bad at. And just because you can make impressive art, doesn't mean that you should. A game like Ori looks visually stunning, but it's clearly made by a team. And if any of these artists were to make a game alone, the game would realistically have to look closer to Iconoclast, you or Spelunky. Maybe Hollow Knight if they're really good and quick at trying. So back to the comment I got. I obviously don't know what went wrong in their situation, but I sometimes see situations where it isn't really anything wrong with the assets, but it's clear to me that the person did not create the asset with the game in mind. The problem with that is that it's not the assets that make the game. You need to evaluate whether an asset looks good in its proper context. You won't fully understand what it is that is appealing about your game art or game design if you don't have any form of minimum viable product. And that is why I think it's so important to get everything into the scene as quick as possible, and don't waste time fixing things that might not be relevant. We can look back at the scene I created for my video on Hollow Knight, where I set up my scene when my assets looked like this. These are just around four assets placed around the scene to see if it could become a sufficiently decent example. And I look here to see what it is that is working and what it is that I need to change. I can see that the depth is good, a few of the particles work quite well, but things like the contrast saturation and brightness of the scene is not that good. Because I set up this scene at this stage, I know what I need to work on, so I can go back and only work on those things. When I finally set it up, we get it looking somewhat different, but still maintaining the spirit of the original scene. It's so easy to view the asset that you're creating as its own individual art piece, but it will honestly leave you wasting your time on something that might be detrimental to the scene itself. For instance, this asset is really busy and cluttered, but since I know from the original scene that I'm going to only add it in a few places, I know I can make it pop a bit more. But if you just start with drawing all your assets and coloring them each individually, 
when you put it all together, they might not work well together, and you might even have trouble identifying where the problem is. And so what I do for pretty much all my scenes is I'll set up the scene with very basic colors before I actually start coloring for real. We can see that in my ghost song scene, there is just line art and flat colors, but it tells me what I need to work on. The key to good art is iteration. A scene like the one I made for my ghost song video had at least 7 iterations before it got anywhere decent. And that is only because I've drawn similar scenes 50 times before. So I would personally look at what type of audience I want to appeal to, look at some games to take inspiration from, and then learn the important things necessary for creating that type of art, and ignore the rest. And not actually just ignore the rest, but like, constrain yourself. Don't do more than you need to do. Figuring out how to make your game is difficult enough. Learning art that isn't required for your game would just be a time sink. Thanks for watching. Bye.